Hi, I'm Tracy Schieber and I work at the school in Hamilton, Missouri. And I'm going to read today Mo the Dog in Tropical Paradise by Diane Stanley and the pictures are by Elise Primavera. In the beginning. Okay. Mo the dog was cold. His breath turned to ice on his whiskers. His ears were warm, but his earmuffs gave him a headache. I can't stand this, he said to his best friend Arlene. A whole week's vacation to sit around and freeze. I can't stand it either, Arlene mumbled through her muffler. Let's take in a movie. So they trudged through the snow to see what was playing at the Roxy. It turned out to be a double feature, Polar Voyage and Whales of the Arctic. Halfway through the first feature, the heat broke down. Can you believe this, groaned Mo? His popcorn had frozen solid. The movies were not a good idea. They left. Outside, a vendor was selling pretzels and hot cocoa. The cocoa sounded like just the thing. So they both had some. A marshmallow stuck to Arlene's nose and froze there. Mo laughed. Arlene cried. Mo said he was sorry and gave her a hug. They got the marshmallow off Arlene's nose. This day is going from bad to worse, said Mo. They popped, nope, they stopped. They stopped in front of a travel office. In the window was a poster. It showed a white sand beach with palm trees. Now that's what we need, said Mo. Which would be best, Tahiti, Hawaii, or the Bahamas. Arlene grinned. Tahiti, definitely. They went inside and talked to the travel agent. He told them how much it would cost. Mo sighed. Maybe some other time, he said. I'm feeling pretty discouraged, said Arlene in a, in a discouraged sounding voice. I'm going home. They said goodbye. On the way home, a truck splashed Mo with slush. Then he slipped on an icy patch on the sidewalk. The snow came down more heavily in big wet flakes. Mo was not a happy dog. When he got home, Mo filled his bathtub with warm water and slid down in it up to his chin. He left out the bubble bath because it reminded him of snow. The feeling began to return to his toes. He thought about palm trees, beaches, and sunshine. Then he had a wonderful idea. He got dressed and pulled some things out of the attic. Then he went to Hugo's Building Supply and Rembrandt's Art Shop and the grocery store. He worked until late into the night. The next morning he called Arlene. Hi, Arlene, he said. It's me, Mo, calling from Tropical Paradise. Wow, said Arlene, who had a generous heart. Lucky you. What's it like? It's warm, said Mo. There's a gentle breeze. I just went swimming. Now I'm having a drink by the pool. I have sand between my toes. Oh, Mo, said Arlene, sneezing. That's wonderful. Yes, it is, said Mo. Say, Arlene, do me a favor, will you? I left in a hurry and I think I left the lights on in my house. Would you go by and check for me? Sure, Mo, said Arlene. Oh, and Arlene, Mo added, bring your swimsuit. Weird, thought Arlene. Arlene slipped her suit into her purse and put on her coat and boots. She walked through the snow to Mo's house. The lights were on. She unlocked the door. Surprise, said Mo. Welcome to Tropical Paradise. Care for a swim, he asked. The next day, Arlene brought flowers, calypso music, and shells. They set up a volleyball net and had a tournament. Arlene made a sarong out of a bed sheet, and she looked very fetching in it. They read books, danced the limbo, and built a sandcastle. Mo and Arlene spent all week in tropical paradise, and neither of them got a sunburn. Where shall we go next year, asked Arlene when the week was up. Egypt, said Mo. 
I've always wanted to see the pyramids. Swell, said Arlene. We'll save the sand. The end.